Well, welcome to our next show, Leading During Crisis. And I'm joined, as you can see on the screen there, by Paul to the rescue from Wyndham, De Wyndham Destinations. I say it like that because you have to say it with the accent, Paul. If you don't say it with the accent, then you're just not doing it right. I so agree. welcome to the show, Paul. I'm super excited and thank you so much for joining us. Um, listen, the, you, as you know, the premise of this show, uh, we took a little bit of a hiatus because the end of the month and the holidays, but um, as you know, and, and I know that we've spoken offline about this, you know, with all this digital transformation going on since the pandemic started, the IT department is super, super critical right now. And in looking at and knowing with, with what you do and looking at your role um, and some of the functions that you have over there at Wyndham Destinations, I thought you'd be one of the perfect guests, one of the per perfect people that I can speak to, to talk about um, some of this change that's going on when it comes to some of the uh, IT initiatives, improvements that can be made, digital transformation, how to handle IT expenses. I think we can get into all of that on the show. So I'm super excited to have you on. Thank you, Paul, for joining. My pleasure. Thank you, John. And Paul, let me just introduce you real quick because I want to let the audience know who you are and what you do. Um, Paul is, uh, you know, he's very proud to say that he has had a very successful and rewarding 25 year career in multiple high levels in IT. He's an, uh, an authentic IT leader who believes in enhancing user experience through transparent, accurate, and consistent service that enables growth, uh, positions in IT, as, and he's a value add partner as well. Um, he's overseeing technology improvement initiatives, as I said earlier, in the IT service alignment for Wyndham Destinations, where he believes in putting the world on vacation, which Paul, I love that saying, because let me tell you, I want to go on vacation right now. I bet you um, do. I'm dying to get out. Um, he's a firm believer in simplification, efficiency, challenging the status quo, which is totally important in what we're talking about here on this podcast series. Um, and he's interested in people development, which I also want to get into as well when we talk about IT leaders recognizing um, the, uh, the development of the folks on their team. So we're going to get into that. And his motto, which I love, is it's all about you. And that was one of the reasons why I was interested in talking to you, Paul, because all those things align perfectly with what this show is and what we're looking to do. So, so thank you for being here again. And um, I want to get right into it with you. I want to just kind of talk about, you know, and we talked about your current role. Um, we talked about how, you know, we're, we're going through all this digital change. And what I'm curious to know in your role as the director um, IT for client services at Wyndham, you're developing and managing the vision of the digital workplace. So talk to me about how when the pandemic started, when COVID hit back in March, talk to me, how was it that you were able to develop your vision for a digital workplace for the associates uh, at Wyndham Destinations? How did you leverage that and what did you do? Good question, John. Thank you for having me and uh, thank you for everybody that's watching this. Uh, just in a spirit of a pure transparency, um, I want to you know, state that my views obviously reflect my, my personal views as a professional, as a technologist. Um, and they're not, uh, despite the fact that I work for Wyndham Destinations, right? I, uh, I want to make sure that, uh, that it's, it's clear that my views represent my, uh, my, my, my professional view on, uh, on, on those statements. So um, um, having said that, um, uh, how pandemic um, uh, allowed us as an organization to um, speed up, if you want, the, 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 what we call the digital transformation? Well, obviously, uh, like most of the folks out there, uh, we are faced uh, immediately with um, with a need to send um, our associates to work remote, and uh, it's it's easy said, um, very hard to do it. Um, um, clearly, we had associates with laptops for which was an easy swap. But uh, what do you do with the uh, uh, contact centers, um, uh, folks that have a desktop um, that and they have a physical phone in the office? They depend on their phone for their business function. So, uh, what would you do with those folks? And so there were challenges that we were faced with. Um, that we quickly resolved as, an, as a team. Right? I think teamwork um, is what, what uh, brought us together. Um, long hours, much like anybody in the industry. And, and we were able to um, put quickly in place a, a program um, uh, with, with participation, not just from IT, but from our project management office, from our business partners, um, get input and consolidate this input into this machine that was crunching numbers and being able to spit out the outputs. And the output was clearly uh, sending people out the door. Uh, our, our mission was to uh, send as many uh, associates as possible and as quick as possible out to work from their 
um, safety of their home and be productive, be able to do their job functions much like they did in the office. Um, as you, again, uh, going back a little bit, uh, one level uh, below on the uh, the challenges, um, it, it's it's relatively easy to send a laptop home. Uh, what do you do with the desktop? So you know, there's there's a there's a uh, element of encrypting the hard drive. We want to make sure that the 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 asset leaves the building, the hard drive is encrypted. So we have the appropriate mechanism to to um, encrypt data. Um, so we we put that in place, and we had to modify to some extent and quickly adjust our uh, telephony. Uh, systems. Um, we, we accelerated the deployment of a what we call the um, virtual phone or a soft phone um, that allowed some segments of, the, of our business partners to be able to go and work remote without a physical phone. Uh, but and, and in addition, in addition to the, the provisioning and the logistical element was the support model. Uh, it's obviously one way to implement or to support the associates sitting in one location versus supporting associates that are uh, this better right now and, and working from home. So uh, clearly we maintain our you know, regular support model, the service desk, it was the level two, level three, et cetera. Um, the, one of the biggest challenges that we've seen was uh, the need right now of personalized that support model. Um, as you can imagine, in, in pre-COVID or pre-pandemic, um, you, you call, you go to the support model, you call a service desk, they help you over the phone. If they cannot help you, you come back to a level two team, which I'm responsible for. And if, if we cannot fix, we go back to the, you know, we go go on to level three. Um, what we've seen right now was a need during this pandemic was a need to um, empathize, empathize a little more with the associate that was calling us. Why? Because we knew uh, much like we are impacted and our families are impacted, we knew that that associate right now being home and being remote, uh, it's most likely living under some sort of stress, uh, personal, society stress, uh, job, uh, and everything else. So, so uh, one of the things that we managed to, to put in place is to do a little coaching and, and, uh, and mentoring with our support functions and be able to show a little more empathy. Um, obviously, we are a hospitality company, and for us, uh, you know, as, as the, uh, you know, the um, our our website and our CEO, um, you know, states we are here to put the world on vacation, um, and we put that we do that with a smile on our face, um, and it's nothing more dear to us, all of us in IT, specifically in the support uh, functions, uh, than to help somebody that's in a need of help. Um, I think that's kind of a nutshell, John. Yeah, and you know, I appreciate you being very thorough with that, Paul, because one of the things I got from your response is that. You know, a lot of times when when this whole thing started and with every episode that I've done, with every IT practitioner that I've spoken to, when I kind of connect the dots, what everyone's saying, it was almost like um, everyone had a scramble, right, to try to figure this out for their organization. But one thing we forgot was that obviously we're all humans, right? And we're going through it as well. Our families yeah. are going through it too. And, and yeah. now you're having to stand up all these devices and all these different changes and all these different uh, workflow issues and... Uh, you know, but at the same time, still trying to manage this personally, you know, with your, yourself, your family, your team, we forget about that. Right. And so yeah. I'm yeah. glad that you said that. I think it was very interesting. And, and what's so unique is that, um, you know, your, your, your organization is in the hospitality, right? You're dealing with people that go on vacation. I'm one of your customers, you know, and, and when we go oh, uh, travel the world and stuff. And so, you know, if you're understanding what I really wanted to get into the mindset of what it was from an IT perspective for you guys, especially when we talk about budget, right? And one of the things that I was so excited about when I when I took a look at your role and when we talked about managing the cost of IT, right? Leveraging, uh, you, ha you say it best on your profile where you say you're leveraging the zero-based budgeting approach. So, um, you know, one of the things as, you know, me being associated with a vendor, right, where I'm at, it's almost like, um, understanding what, what the needs are from an IT perspective, if it's not impacting the business today, or if, it, if it's not saving money, we can't have a conversation about that. Now, I know you and I talked about this offline when we were setting up this, this uh, episode. Talk to me a little bit about that. From your perspective, what does that look like right now when it comes to managing the IT budget with all the changes that are going on right now in the world? So obviously, John, you're right. Uh, you know, um, it's a different world, um, um, and what was um, a good to have pre-COVID is not necessarily true nowadays. Right? When it's it's a must-have, 
uh, much like anybody else, uh, right? The, the company is going through, you know, relatively turbulent times, um, you know, and you, you know very well how the, the industry here in Orlando, right? We are dependent on the tourism and, and hospitality. So um, uh, having, you know, uh, you know go, going through those this, this pandemic crisis, I think uh, I think uh, how we manage to to solve that uh, relatively um, uh, painful problem of uh, what's important, what's a must, and I think uh, we kind of translated that into um, what's a must for us to maintain our operational readiness and our um, user experience in the field, and if that uh, translated into well, we don't have to replace uh, endpoints uh, every four years because the life cycle is knocking on door. Maybe right now well, we can maintain what we have and squeeze another year out of our devices, as an example, right? Um, so um, um, there's uh, monitors. Uh, do we need to purchase 22-inch uh, monitors or do we need to purchase 24 or 26, whatever the size is, right? So I think it became a conversation on we need to only focus on what's a must. Um, we, we had um, uh, several initiatives pre-COVID on our portfolio. They were uh, related and they continue to be on our portfolio, but kind of paused for us uh, right now through this pandemic. We had uh, activities that were related to improving the proactiveness of the endpoint management and, you know, various technologies and tools out there on the market, um, which were good to have. Um, but then we looked, we started to look collectively the the, the you know, the management team that I'm part of, we started to look collectively at those initiatives and we said, it probably doesn't make sense, right? Uh, why do we need to invest and implement this new technology that's good to have uh, when right now we just need to per se survive, right? So we need to we need to be able to rally together, go through this period uh, with what we have. Um, obviously, as you can imagine, with some losses, right, there, were, there were casualties throughout the, uh, throughout the way. Uh, we lost you know, some percentage of our workforce. So right now we are less, we're doing less with less, um, which means a heightened alert on, on, on spending. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the element that I want to bring up right now quick in here is the, because budget aligns, despite the fact that we do not recognize or, or you know, we, we truly understand the, the impact, but the budget aligns with the, uh, with the employees or associ associate motivation, right? If somebody comes from the top down and says the budget has been slashed 50%, 40%, whatever percentage, and we've seen this all of us in our careers, the first thing that does with the rank and file is demoral demoralizing, right? Because it's just natural. When you know there's no but the budget got slashed, you know that there are a lot of activity or initiatives and projects will be, um, you know, paused or postponed. So, so that's a demoralizing aspect. And right now, we, we, what we had to do through the pandemic, again, keeping in mind that the associates were impacted by what's happening in the society, in the world, uh, next door. How do we keep them energized and more and 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 uh, engaged in to a point that they not, not that they forget what's happening out there, but keep them motivated and give them a, 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 a an easy way out, a professional easy way out. So when they are working, when they are producing for a support organization, they are focused, truly focused at what they need to do. And I think there was, I think there was an element that we would partner with our learning and development folks, and you know, with with, uh, with experience from various senior folks in the organization, we managed to brainstorm and put together some informal programs. Of keeping everybody informed. Now, obviously, there was there were there were and there continue to be communications from the most senior level um, in business and in IT on a regular basis. And I think that keeps clearly keeps our associates motivated. They know there's a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. They know that um, they were selected. They are here right now, and the purpose of being here is to continue to support our business. Awesome. Yeah, and you know that's I appreciate you being. Um... I appreciate you being transparent is the word I want to use there because, you know, you touched on a bunch of different things there. And, and one of the things I think is most important to realize is that, you know, Wyndham, just like every other company on the globe has gone through, um, you know, unfortunately some changes where they had to let some people go. And that's tough. That's a tough yeah. reality for folks, not only in the IT community, but just all around. Mm -hmm. But, you know, one of the things that I, I love that you said is that, you know, hearing it, from your perspective where you have to still deal with that, the mental part of it, but still you're going to have to figure out ways to keep moving forward and keep the business moving forward from exactly. the IT perspective. So yeah. 
And, and by the way, Paul, I, I can't get over the fact when I see each other, you know, you and I side by side, it looks like we're brothers from another mother. I don't know what's <laughs> going on, but we got the same hairstyle going. We got the same goatee going. You and I are vibing, my man. We're vibing. And uh, and glasses. So and glasses. That's right. There you go. <laughs> so um, so let me ask you this, right? Because um, I want to really focus a little. I want to dive in a little bit more to what you just said there, because I think um, obviously you 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 shared some of the challenges that were were you know the IT teams are going through, and you're you're not alone. I've spoken to many people, many of your peers. They all say the same. Um, but I also think there's some opportunity for some um, some advantages that we can take from this, and where we talk about um, promoting and have, and we're seeing uh, individuals on our teams that are are you know coming to the table with creative ideas and who are bringing wonderful initiatives to mm -hmm. to the organization to the IT team, and you know I want to talk about un tapping in to the team capacity, right? Is, is, the, is the word I wanted to use, the individual potential for, for these folks. What yeah. happens from an IT perspective, and I've asked this to some of the other guests on the show, and I wanna ask you to get your take on it as well. We're gonna identify these folks, we're gonna see that they are talented, uh, right? And talk to me about two things. One, what advantages may that bring to that person? And two, here's an interesting one, how does the organization retain that top talent? Because nowadays IT is is you know is prime stake, right? That's the filet mignon is the IT professional. Yep. If you could be if you could be a really good rock star in IT, you're going to be in demand. Um, so how do you retain that talent? Talk to me about that. Yeah, good question. So um, I'll take a, a quick step back. Step back, and uh, the way we uh, motivate, and uh, you know, specifically in my group, and I know it's it's reverberating in other groups in in the IT organization here. Um, um, I, I'm a strong believer in professional curiosity and i read somewhere you know the, uh, that um, if you continue to be professionally curious um you will go further uh, professional curiosity uh, transpires or translates into challenging the status quo and i know it's a some some may think it's a buzzword but if you challenge anything that you do repeatedly or you, things that may, may not make any sense because they were done in you know for years and years I think if you if you employ that that uh, thinking, um, you are showing curiosity. You are showing that you know you are challenging why certain things are done. And so what we've done uh, through this pandemic right now, we really encourage that. So we used to have a a campaign. We 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 call it pre-pandemic. We call it ideation campaign. So on my team, uh, we would encourage folks on a uh, quarterly basis to submit ideas. They will streamline our support processes, modernize the way we do things, uh, standardize certain things. So there was an you know, ideation campaign. It was pretty, pretty successful. Uh, pandemic came, we put a stop. And again, our focus was to send people home and focus at, at the remote support. Um, nonetheless, the ideation campaign right now morphed into this uh, being curious and do not allow something that's happening uh, that that you've been doing for a while to continue to exist without challenging and so um i think that brought being curious i think it challenged um our folks um to really 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 question in a professional way and with appropriate guidance and course correction when needed uh to to challenge uh stuff what i call stuff that was done in the past and i very good ideas came up um uh, one of the things that uh, that i can share right now with you and um uh, we, uh, as you can imagine, right now with this in this uh, in this climate, um, there's still a need to to uh, fix the endpoint devices. Right, as much as we like to be remote, you know, it's not possible. The associate, if the laptop it's dying or the desktop has a broken something, that has to be touched by somebody. So um, the, the challenge was um, and continues to be. What do we do? Uh, do we create? Do we send emails? Do we create Excel spreadsheets to track? And the answer is no. Why not? And so again, we pose this question to our associates, the folks that are on the ground, um, how would you do this? And uh, guess what? Um, we are right now in process of, um, of um, it's what I call, it, it, it's maybe a little, it's a little more than, than what it is, but anyway, we are digitizing our workplace. And what I mean by that, we are, we are moving to Office 365, um, the whole company, various locations and brands. And obviously with 365 comes the mailbox and exchange online as well as the microsoft teams which is uh, clearly not a replacement for skype for business right microsoft teams is the hub for teamwork as microsoft markets the product so um 
with Microsoft Teams, it came and it come with, with a product come a lot of uh, features or applications or solutions built in. One of them being bookings. Um, I, somebody in the team was curious when we posed the question, um, how do we deal with that um, um, on-site um, associates coming in with their broken devices? How do we schedule them? How do we know who comes at 10, who comes at 11? Obviously, we need to keep the physical distance and right protect our associates. So somebody saw the, the, the solution that's called Bookings. It's in Microsoft Teams. And right now we're piloting. We're piloting the solution. Um, good results so far. We're planning to potentially put it in production within a few weeks. That will be a, an easy mechanism of scheduling. It's almost like when you go to, uh, uh, if you remember pre-COVID, when we were going to the uh, lab, right? like LabCorp or the other folks. Um, you will walk in and either way you have a walk-in, you have an iPad that you sign your name and they put your name on the screen, or you create an appointment. That's exactly what this bookings application does, right? It creates an appointment and you know exactly you can go at a certain day and time at a certain location. Um, so going back to the curiosity, I think I think uh, we've seen by promoting this this idea of, of curiosity, we've seen people stepping up and, uh, and, and, and coming up with the ideas. Um, the other thing that I want to that I want to mention when it comes to um, keeping associates uh, uh, engaged and at, you know as an end result keeping them employed, um, this is a time as our CEO mentions over and over in, in many many conferences and meetings. Um, uh, and I like actually the quote: "The bus is parked. Let's change the tires." Or mm-hmm. while the bus is parked, why not changing the tires? Uh, I think, and there's certain, there's multiple uh, examples of what you know my colleagues in in, in at Wyndham Destinations did throughout this pandemic, but specifically my team, while the bus was parked and everybody was away from the main campuses, guess what? We uh, modernized some of our conference rooms. Somebody may say it's crazy, stupid. Why would you spend money on conference room? Well. We know we're, we're going to come back, right? We are resilient. We'll come back. Maybe in a 20, 30, 40, 50 percent, who knows, right? But we'll come back. Um, and I think having the winning mentality um, allows us to continue to focus at what's important for the future, right? It's not just living in the present and dealing with the existing pandemic. Mm-hmm. But so so we modernize conference rooms to a point right now that I know for some, some in the audience may sound trivial, but we have right now state of the art uh, conferencing where you press up a button, we're using Zoom rooms. So you press the button and you, you can have your meeting. You don't need to bring your tablet. The content is being displayed. We have those cool iPads at the door where you can schedule. You can see the room is green or red. Uh-huh. A great example of us changing not just the tires, but changing the transmission while the bus was parked. And uh-huh. I think that that brought an element, and we've done this in, in, in a few locations throughout the, the continental US and globally that that this element of of continually modernizing and upgrading and being curious of technology mm-hmm. allows us to um, motivate those associates that are spending time right as you can imagine it's not as easy to to implement a zoom room um, as it as is to fix a laptop but the same desktop technician that would fix a laptop was right now or multiple or group of them were assigned right now to understand and talk to their peers in various segments in IT of what's involved in a Zoom room. And there's multiple, there's multiple elements, right? There's an exchange, um, an exchange account component, there's the mobile iron for the iPad, right? So there's multiple elements that allow our associates to spend their time and focus at, at new technologies, hmm. which Interesting. is good. And you know, and I think that goes in theme with your model, right? It's all about you. It's all about them. It's all about the employees, right? And that's what your your role is. And that falls perfectly in line with what you're saying, with what your motto is. So I appreciate you saying that. One of the things, Paul, that I want to kind of explore further with you as as I'm thinking about what you said, and it ties into a lot of the other episodes as well, when we talk about, um, you, you know, when this whole thing started, how you had to stand up all these devices, right? You had these company issued devices, or maybe if you, you know, maybe some folks are using their own personal devices, um, at home. Talk to me about some of the challenges that that presented for your team and how did you overcome those challenges? And, and let me preface what I'm saying by, by saying this. So one of the stories that I heard was that there was a person who, you know, a lot of these folks weren't familiar with the kind of best practices of working from home. And they opened up their laptop. They went to go get dinner. They left their laptop open. 
and the spouse came in and said, hey, can I just check my email? And went onto their Gmail account and they were still logged into the VPN. Obviously, they clicked on something they shouldn't have clicked on and it was a virus. The employee didn't click on it. The employee spouse clicked on it. But yeah. just some of the best practice, those are some of the things we don't think about, logging off of the VPN, yeah. you know, you know, making sure that everything is secure. So I've heard, I've heard those stories. We've spoken about that on the show a couple of times with different IT practitioners. You mentioned about you, you know, having all these employees working from home now and having these company issued devices. What was like? What was that like for Wyndham? Did you guys experience that that same situation? And if so, how did you handle it? Yeah, very good question. Uh, um, actually, my my counterparts in uh, in information security they uh, they spend a considerable amount of time on on marketing and socializing um security best practices for our associates and as you can imagine this is one of them uh, making sure that when you leave your desk it doesn't matter what the desk is it's not anymore in the headquarter right now it's at your home when you leave your desk you need to lock your pc so i, I think what we, we took from here uh, it's almost there was no need to uh, there was no need to retrain our associates to do something different what we reinforced and again, those are my colleagues in information security, was just a, a need to reinforce our associates that irrespective of where you are, you need to follow the same security protocol, such as you don't answer the phone if you don't recognize the number. Uh, you only click on the emails that make sense, right? Yeah, so you need to uh, you know, assess and, and look at an email that comes in your inbox. You lock your computer to avoid the kid or somebody to send an email. Um, so, so those are you know standard practices that we've done. Um, the other element I want to touch on because you asked me how we dealt with uh, what are the challenges when people work from home. I think we overlooked all of us holistically. We overlooked the importance of um, internet connections. I everybody's in a different. So, despite the fact that we are primarily based here in Orlando, um, you know, metro area, we have colleagues working all over the world, all over the country, um, and when people went home. Um, right now, you have different providers, Spectrum, Cox Cable, Optimum Up North, and, you know, other providers, Xfinity, whatever they are, right? And Don't so, forget Crown Castle. From, right? So when you have you different service providers, um, you don't know what, um, right? It's one thing to have your internet access at home for browsing the web or, you know, watching the movies on Netflix. It's another thing to have it for business. So there were there were situations where our associates encountered some challenges on, on making sure that they can either way upgrade to the next level of internet because it was not sufficient for the data they were they were, they were, they, they were in need for. Um, there were others that, um, um, and one of the things I think it's, it's still vivid in my mind, I do remember when we sent the associates home back in March, uh, we created obviously the cheat sheets or the user instructions. And I remember, you know, obviously folks in my team and others, we created those and he said, plug your ethernet cable in here. And um, it, it dawned to us a few days later when we had a conversation with, you know, some supervisors or managers in our contact center, people were like, what's an ethernet cable, right? So I think what it dawned on us at that point that documentation that we create has to be, has to make sense. For the end user for the right for the rank and file because um uh we had instructions i remember saying uh, check your router speed and a lot of people were like what's a router like right right we are in technology we know what a router is we know what a switch is but you know most of the associates don't know what it is so anyway uh, the, the the message was we had to fine tune and refine our language when we communicate to adapt to the new environment of work from home, right? So yeah. terminology such as routers, which is Ethernet, uh, right? The, all those things have to be had to be refined and translated into plain English or uh, right common interesting. language. Interesting. You know, it's funny that you say that because even myself, I'm not an IT. You know, uh, I'm not a. a a technical person by any means, you know, I'm technical. I know I, I'm technical enough to do damage, but I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not at your level. And when I even hear that and I hear certain things, I never even thought about that. Like having to really simplify, like plug your ethernet cable in here and all those things that you said, I never even realized that that was something that could be, that was something that you had to consider. So, so very interesting. And thank you for saying that. And I just want to correct myself. Uh, you were talking about residential, Connectivity. Crown Castle does not do residential. I, I, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I want to make that correction. One of the things, Paul, I want to show you is we actually have a comment from Diamond Williams, who's in the audience watching. Um, and he wrote, this is in relation to your previous comment to the question before. 
no disrupt no disruptions at the return effective use of cash longer flight path at return communicates the future to employees so that really goes to what we were saying a couple questions ago and i just wanted to put that up there to show you that uh, it, it really is uh, in line with what you said there and i appreciate that so yeah, it's 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 valid i i, I want to comment quick on that communicates the future to employees right so um, as much as i nobody has a crystal ball right and nobody will know um what's going to be the future right we look we look around us and everything changes right now on a you know on a daily basis or a weekly basis so um, nonetheless i think the message that uh, we communicate to i communicate to my to my team and you know our senior management and leadership communicates to the companies um uh, this is the time when we have to go to this right so we, we know we need to we, we, we are resilient we know we are resilient we will survive we will go through it but this is the time when we have to encourage everybody to think a little more critical and be more adaptive and i think it's a good trait to have right be more adaptive and quickly change course i uh, we, we've seen right now in the, those past six months that we have to change course in various projects uh stop pause park move right so so there was a lot of uh, of, of uh, situations where we had to um to be more adaptive and for right. some of us um it was not easy it was difficult it was a challenge and i think this is if if we take anything out of this uh this pandemic is the need to be more agile and more adaptive to uh -huh. to what's happening around us well like your ceo says right while the bar while the bus is parked change the tires change the oil change the brake fluid i'd give you, change it all since the bus is parked right yeah yeah make sure the windshield wipers are good i mean i would change it all right it, so, it's a good analogy it's a very it good is, analogy it exactly. is very good so let me ask you this pause we start to wind down here i just want to ask you this you know um there's folks in the audience that are watching this that are in it some of your peers probably um and uh you know unlike the forward thinking of Wyndham where we're saying well, since right now the bus is parked, let's change the tires. Some are saying, hey, don't touch the bus, right? We, we the, don't do anything right now. We're kind of in a pause mode. I've noticed in my conversations, they fall within three buckets. They're either one, they're kind of, like I said, in pause, right? Two, they're, they're in panic mode still. We believe it or not, even though we're, what, seven months into this now, because they thought that it would be over and it's not. And what do we do? We're not where we were last year, year over year. Yeah. And, and B, uh, which is the worst place to be in which is where they're you know they're obviously going through the layoffs maybe they're in their second round at this point maybe third round and they're worried about themselves too at some point so they have these wonderful ideas like you mentioned some of the folks at Wyndham innovative ideas that came up with these new things with the with the conference center they have all these ideas but they don't have um a way to uh share that with upper management and they're afraid, you know, maybe there's not enough money in the budget. Is this something that I actually want to bring in the, into the table? So my question to you, Paul, is as we wrap up, how does the IT person that's watching, how do they innovate while still keeping the lights on? Yeah, uh, very good question. And we went through uh, something similar or some, something of this uh, um, yesterday. My encouragement for everybody uh, is... Uh, do not be deterred of a refusal. I think it was, uh, it must have been, uh, it wasn't Bill Gates. I think it was, uh, um, I don't remember right now. Anyway, I read somewhere that um, uh, uh, the success is built on failures. So um, so don't don't be, don't feel rejected if somebody will, will uh, put down or put you down for an idea where they may think that, well, your idea is a great idea, but this is not the right time. Uh, continue to be curious. Um, and continue to, to think outside the box and, and challenge the status quo. There's nothing for, for me, for my team, and they know this, and I encourage this, no idea is a bad idea. Um, some ideas may not be prone for execution or planning, planning assessment, planning and execution at that point, uh, but continue to think, right? Don't, don't get demotivated by the fact that, right? When you go, I'll give an example. If, I, if you go right now with an idea of, you know, saving X millions of dollars to somebody, uh, that person may may have so many other things uh, in in his or her mind. They will probably dismiss. May not even have time to focus or or pay attention to you. And they will tell you, no, this is no good right now. We don't have money in the budget. And I think that's the danger. The danger is by by refusing or rejecting an idea without the proper um, explanation or justification. I think he has the tendency of of, of encapsulating. Uh, uh, an associate mind into that into that mode of you know what um, 
I'm not valuable. Everybody re rejects what I do. I, I think again, the message is don't get distracted. Don't get, uh, uh, don't get disappointed that somebody says, no, it's a good idea. Um, but you know, maybe in the future. And for those that are, you know, in a leading, uh, you know, leadership positions, I guess the message that I have all the time is ensure that when you um, assess an idea as not being at the appropriate time and and in, right at the moment, uh, make sure that the uh, not the rejection, but make sure that the answer back or the response back to the requester is uh, it, it it's positive. Look at the the glass half full versus half empty. Right, it, it's it's the same message, the same words, but they make a big impact, huge difference. Right, so yeah. great idea, but you know, I think and not the I don't like the word but and let's revisit this in 2021 or later or 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 even I will go a step further and I do this on critical thinking with with my team. Um, if somebody comes with an idea that I I kind of smell and know that may not be um, something that we we could entertain, at least challenge and have continue the conversation what else would you think what problems does this solution solves is anything else that if it's if it's not and i think it's one of the the, the you know the, the classic answers right now and it's just the way it is if it doesn't solve a financial uh cause or financial reasons most of the people will refuse any ideas it's just the way it is right in the climate but the, again the message is keep those ideas create your own registry of, of ideas and keep coming in them. Don't don't let yourself down and keep bringing them up because you may find the right time in the right moment when that idea is perfect. Interesting take on it. Um, very well said, by the way, Paul. I mean, it's uh, it's. I know that there's some folks out there that are hurting and they're wondering what to do next. So I appreciate you sharing that because that's a really really good perspective on maybe not not right now is not the right time, but just keep keep that on file. And make sure you know that when the time is right, then you can present that. One of the things I wanted to bring up, uh, Paul, we actually got another question from Diamond Williams. This is an interesting question I'll propose to you. Um, he gets five meg at home, 20 meg is the highest available. What kind of solutions are available for rural, rural associates? So say, for example, have you have you've had any associates at Wyndham that have had that challenge? And if so, how, how, what, what was the resolution? How did you correct that? So we do have, obviously, you know, with the, with the folks working remote and uh, clearly not here in the Orlando area, but uh, in in, uh, in in out west or midwest, um, uh, we we do we did employ a, a check uh, if you want a um, a, ch a checkpoint uh, before somebody um, starts putting their equipment online and, and connect to make sure it works. Uh, we use you know uh, you know a, uh, an off the shelf solution that checks the speed test and and uh, produces that output of the speed check. And send it to somebody in IT that can take a look and they, you know will say yes, no, maybe so, right? This is appropriate. So I don't know exactly the details with the five versus twenty, but um, so we, we implemented this checkpoint uh, that that looks at the connectivity. We have certain parameters. Obviously, different applications they require different um, input of of, uh, of data from the from the cable providers. Um, so um, sometimes we, we there were situations where our associates were. Um, and I don't remember this somewhere in, I think it was in Midwest, in Tennessee or somewhere, um, their connection was so bad and it was uh, primarily, uh, it was not cable, it was uh, satellite driven. And every time it was raining, and obviously right now it rains a lot in the summer, um, they had a, they, they could not connect. Um, and at that point, you know, it becomes one of those, well, you know, you got to deal with mother nature, right? It's not much you can do. Uh, you can probably up your connection at home uh, you know, get a better connection or get a better plan, or um, you know, you kind of have to work your schedule around this. So th 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 there's ways of of going around this mother nature, right? Maybe at that point when when it's storming in Tennessee, maybe the you know other two associates there in Carolina can take the calls as an example, right? If it's snowing in Montana, maybe somebody else in uh, you know rural Alabama can can pick up the calls, right? So there's ways of for leaders and managers to be able to be again going back to the being agile and adaptive adjusting their work habits to accommodate for those type of challenges gotcha well listen i i really appreciate it uh, your answers there even 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 showing how agile uh, and adaptive you could be with some of the comments that were coming in so yeah. i appreciate you doing that it, it just shows 
a testament to uh, who you are and what you do. And just like your motto, right? It's all about you. This episode and this whole series is all about them, right? The folks that win them, the folks at every other organization out there that are in our IT community who are just struggling and hurting out there. So, uh, Paul, your words, uh, I'm sure, do not fall on deaf ears. I want to thank you very much for participating um, because I think you've added a lot of value. You filled the gap, and I really want to thank you and appreciate thank you, uh, your time. Thank you. And awesome I, stuff. For those awesome that, stuff. So, see you later. Be safe out there. Thank you. You as well. And everyone, thank you very much again for watching the latest episode of Leading During Crisis. Big thank you to my goal, Paul. Uh, big thank you to my guest, Paul. To the rescue is how he says it. But I know there's there's a better way for me to say that with the accent. You're and right. uh, I'm going to work on that. But Paul, it's a pleasure. Uh, we got a chance to meet each other earlier this year. And uh, I really want to thank you for this. And, and um, I'm sure that we're going to get great feedback. So awesome, awesome stuff, guys. Stay tuned for our next episode. We're going to have a bunch of folks. We have a bunch of folks lined up from different um, areas and different industries, not just IT practitioners. I want to get the take from some other folks that are also selling to IT so they can give you uh, an idea of what they're going through. So we're going to have those as well. So thank you very much, Paul. And everyone, please stay safe and catch us on the next episode of Leading During Crisis. Take, Take care. care, everyone. Bye-bye.